I'm going to try not to be an asshole because my daughter is going to be in the audience. I'm going to try so hard. So hard. Hi! Uh, I'm Dino, this is Scott, and that's Britta. Hi. <laughs> Hi. We have an array of people here. Some people who look uh, kind of cross to be here, like they're here because of parking tickets. Uh, <laughs> I see some cause. Is this, is this like a detention for people at all? To be. Is, is Scott lower than me? I feel like he's, yeah, he needs to be. Uh, test, test. He needs to be less Protestant I, I was on my and more, more Greek Orthodox. I'll tell you him. what, since Dino's mic is hot, I'll run back there and fix it. Tell them a little bit about Moral Oral if they haven't seen the show yet. Go fuck yourself. Why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> to go turn your mic on, but I can't do both Don't at once. Don't tell me what to say. No, thank you very much. Moral Oral's a cartoon. <laughs> you guys, that's why you're here, right? If this ever gets boring, I have the special loaded up. There's a half-hour special coming in October, and I'm not supposed to show it, or else I'll get put in uh, Adult Swim jail. But, you know, it's like Hogan's Heroes. They, Adult Swim's get, jail is easy to fucking break out of. If you get bored, you can just start chanting special, and if everyone is saying special, special at the same time, we'll special. just start it. We can't hear you, Scott. Yeah, me too. We need more Scott. More Scott? We need more Scott. Why don't you talk for oh, once? Scott, but he has a, he's allowed in the monitor. Oh, is, oh, but Scott's still lower than me. Oh, hi. It's, what's your name, little guy? My name is Jack. Hello. Jack, hi. My question would be, uh, you, you guys do a lot of different parts on a lot of different shows. What is it like preparing for each different character, and how do you go about doing that? That's a really good question. I like to... Um, I usually do like vocal exercises for about three years before I do each part. Uh, it's basically a, a, e, u, a. I'll do it for like 10 minutes now just so you can get the hang of it. A, a, e, u, a. Well, how do you get it? Hi. 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 You've got, you know. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Now right. I can hear you. Yeah. Now you're a, you know, you're a, you're a handsome guy. Yes. You don't eat vegetables. Scott doesn't eat vegetables. It's an interesting thing about me. But he's still a good-looking guy. How do you get into a part? <laughs> uh, I do Kegel exercises. <laughs> um, and uh, you I usually ask me to uh, to help with your Kegel in some way. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead. No, keep no, talking. no. Please, no, no. Keep making that joke. <laughs> um, I usually, am, when I'm doing voices, I'm trying to make Dino laugh. That's my preparation, is knowing Dino for 20 oh years and knowing what makes him laugh. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, now Britta, that's what you've been doing wrong for oh, fucking four years. God, I'm sorry. Haven't laughed. Sorry. No, of course. I always laugh at, no. at Britta, too. Not, I laugh at Britta. I'm not supposed to be so funny. Dino created the show. I helped uh, at, its, at its inception. And uh, I do voices, and I direct and produce and write. Uh, and then uh, Britta does voices. All, almost all the females on the show Britta does, and Dino picks up the slack on the voices. Yeah, I do a couple of voices here and there. Okay, excuse me. Could everyone <laughs> at the Supercom please be quiet? <laughs> just, uh, just no talking. We all would like to make the rules here. Please be quiet. We have police. All right. The monitor's humming a little bit up here, just a little. Okay, it's because I'm being loud and screaming. I think it might be your, I think it might be Scott. Does anyone have Scott's any questions? Mike, maybe. Don't be, don't be afraid. Jack, Jack did it, and he's not related in any way to any of us. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask, when are we gonna get to see Mother Teresa? You know what? I should have brought it today. Uh, if you go on my Facebook page, and ask me. I'll, I'll, I'll let you watch it. All right. What, what is that, Dino? Mother Chabisa? Yeah. Oh. Uh, you don't know, Scott? I do. Oh. <laughs> uh, it's an episode of Mary Shelley's Frankenhold that was never aired because it was about Mother Teresa being slutty. But uh, I maintain that it wasn't offensive because the only reason she was slutty is because people kept asking her to have 
sex. And she was so nice and saintly that she couldn't say no. She didn't necessarily want to have sex with these people. Although, you know, by the eighth guy. <laughs> yeah. You're going at it. You're into it. Okay, yes, Superman. Oh, uh, yeah, it's about a uh, episode Sacrifice on more oral. Sacrifice? You saw Sacrifice, right? Yeah, it's my favorite episode, man. I wanted to Can you guys hear him? Yeah, well, you talk, speak loudly. You could move that enough? mic up. Very close. Have okay. you been in show business before? <laughs> no. Here, well, this is your first time in show business? Can you turn this oh, hey, little down. monitor down yeah, a see, little you bit? Put this up like this? And really, really speak into it. Yeah. yeah. How do you get up? What was the question? Uh, we don't. We didn't hear the question because he didn't have the mic up. All right. The question was, how did you come up with the monologue for the entire episode of Sacrifice? Because I'll tell like you, I have a good story for that. Thank you. You you could sit down and enjoy the story comfortably, or stay up here and uh, you know, no, sit down. In a seat. Uh, there was an episode before that called Nature where Clay, Scott's character, goes off. And I wrote like maybe three or four lines for that. And, but then Scott ad-libbed like a whole monologue for uh, being out. It was the camping trip episode. And he ad-libbed a lot of that. And it's a lot of people's favorite moment uh, from the show. And I was inspired by that and it kind of showed me that uh, Clay has a lot of demons inside. So then I wrote this way too long monologue. It was like, what, a, a page and a half of just blackness. And, um, and I wrote it, and then like a year later, uh, it was actually written for season, uh, season two, but we didn't have time to do it, so we uh, pushed it to season three. Uh, a year later, uh, someone at Adult Swim said, you gotta cut that big monologue, no one's gonna wanna hear that. And so I cut it. And uh, right before the record, I was like, I gotta put it back, I love that monologue, I wanna at least record it, I wanna have it. And um, so we sat down and Scott sees this for the first time, he's like, what? so what's going on, what am I thinking? And I, and I look at it and I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> This was a year ago. I have no idea what this character's talking about. So we really, we, uh, we worked on it for uh, maybe like half a day, I think, and just like sort of brought back my memories of what that character was and adding on what Scott thought. And I think everyone in the room sort of uh, helped out with bringing that uh, monologue to life. And, uh, and now that's become some people's favorite moment from the show. I'll be funny next time. Come on up! What are you dressed as, little guy? Ah, uh, nothing. nothing. Ah, boring. <laughs> so, so I have a question in going into nature. Were you planning on the tone change? Or was it just something nature worked really well and you go into season three thinking, let me just do it like this? Um, I know personally, uh, I, when the first nine episodes were written, they were all pretty goofy episodes from season one, and uh, I got tired of that very quickly. And by the ninth episode, I started getting a little serious, and I wrote, I remember uh, talking to Scott, and I said, I kinda, I wanna get a little serious and real with these characters, and he's like, yeah, let's do it. You know, we, and then by the Christmas episode of the first season, it got very serious, and I think by the end of the first season, it got, uh, it got to where season, end of season two, beginning of season three was, our, was at, at the time. But uh, they made us pull back a little after, after season one because uh, the Christmas episode was the first one that aired, and uh, <laughs> which was the wrong way to go completely because it was supposed to be the last one of the season. But we, we, were, we talked about like a five-year plan where these little kooky little puppets would go from the characters you see in season one, just kind of like a naughty parody almost, yeah. uh, and evolve over the course of like five years into the most realistic people on television. Uh, and that would be the funny. Just the fact that it wasn't funny. Right. Yeah, I mean, I just like when a puppet just sits there and doesn't do anything. An animated figure. <laughs> looking just, sad. Looking sad and depressed and like the world is over. Because uh, puppets are usually fun guys. 
I think we could all agree on that. <laughs> Come on up, little guy. What are you dressed as? Starburns. Whoa. Yeah, nice. I, I, I fucked it up. Though. Yeah, they're, they're in there yeah. somewhere. It's your uh, job to sculpt them out. I, I suck at it. I uh, wanted to know what your inspiration for Moral Oral was. Did you grow up in like a shitty Christian conservative town or you just making shit up? Like, I, uh, I, I grew up fairly religious, so I'm sure that subconsciously had something to do with it. But I think uh, mostly the state of um, the world at that point with the, the, uh, the Bush administration and right wing Christians um, definitely helped that. I had a script that I originally wrote as a sitcom for Iggy Pop playing a kid and, um, and actually showed it to Iggy. And uh, I, I showed him the script, I showed him the cover page. <coughs> and it was called Iggy and he looked at it and he's like, oh, whoa, thanks, dude. Like he never saw his name in ink before. <laughs> um, and I started telling him about it and he's like, uh-huh, uh-huh, and we're sitting outside at a, at a life cafe. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I said, now, Iggy, pay attention to what I'm saying. And he said, sorry, man, there's pussy everywhere around here. I'm like, all right, well, I'll just take it home with you and read it. And I don't think he ever read it. But uh, so I took that, that script and added a little religious element to it and then decided to animate it. Yeah. And can I ask Scott, could you do that uh, rambling monologue thing from that episode of 30 Rock? Uh, the, oh, that... Uh, were they drugged you or some shit? Like, oh, yeah, when you had the brain you, hemorrhage or something? Could you do that off the top of your head or no? Oh, let me see. Um. <laughs> do you know how it starts? I don't. I don't. <laughs> well, the answer's no, then. <laughs> Sit down. Thank you. If I, if I just remember it, I'll say it. Everyone knows Britta as uh, Bliberta, right? Uh, Bliberta Puppington? And uh, she plays Stephanie, the Pierce girl, a lot of people's favorite character. And Tommy. Tommy, the, the, the one no one knows about. A kid. Uh, and, uh, Sculpt him. Miss Sculpt him. And, and Nurse Bendy. Nurse Bendy, and, and she also plays Elizabeth Frankenstein. And Florence. As, as, but as Britta puts it, she plays Elizabeth Frankenhole. Still doesn't know her own character's name. <laughs> I knew uh, it. What are you dressed as, little guy? <laughs> uh, are my nipples hard? Is that why you call me nipple? Okay, this is going to be a problem. I know right, this sorry, guy. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Put him away. Um, I'm dressed as me, Johan Luna. Uh, Just get to the question. All right, the question. Uh, question is, uh, I want my own cartoon on Adult Swim. That's a statement. <sighs> yeah, it, it might be rhetorical because I'm figuring that out. Statement, 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 statement. Statement, statement, statement. What would you guys uh, recommend or suggest or advice-wise? Yeah, right. Uh, ad advice-wise, what can I do as far as, like, I'm making a pilot cartoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Is it all? Do, 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 do. All right. Okay. Well. <laughs> what you need to do is remember what we told you when we were signing autographs. We told you. We answered all this right, question right. already. Don't share it with anybody else then. Um, okay. Uh, all this. we said to him was... <laughs> Go out there and love what you do, man. Yeah. <laughs> Just be a hippie. But hippies can't do what you guys are doing unless they have a career. Yeah, well, how do you, you think we, we were born with a career? That's, that's, the, that's, a, that's yeah. the aim. That's the All goal. Right. All right. Uh, well, we will answer it. Go sit down. <laughs> Find a way to get your material seen. <laughs> that's where you start. Oh, God. Oh, sorry, you, you sorry, 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 sorry. I didn't say that. Sorry, sorry. Is it all about YouTube nowadays? Uh, we don't know. Yeah. We did not use. It's we a didn't, little. Oh uh, yeah, no, no. Second <laughs> we Second All right. We did not use YouTube. We don't know. But but I think the kids nowadays could use YouTube. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you. That all was right, a good right. question. I had more. Put. Yeah. Nah, no, 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 Time's up. Yeah, time's up. Time's yeah, up, we had two up. people lined up behind you, and one guy's already <laughs> been up. <laughs> <laughs> Hello I, again. Um, I just want to ask, um, what surprised you most that you were able to get uh, that you actually managed to get aired in season three more? Or uh, what, did you, what did you think was going to get cut by the network? Well, we thought alone would be the thing that would get us yanked off the air, and it was. Yeah. Yeah, the, the one where the, the teacher wants to get raped, that was a bad one. <laughs> uh. It was about, it was about three women make. in town and the, on how they spend their evenings alone. Uh, I originally didn't think anything was going to get cut because I thought, hey, it's Adult Swim. They're nuts. 
but it turns out that we're crazier than Adult Swim. So what are you going to do? And not in a good way. In, in the guy who just spoke before you kind of way. I'm, I'm a little afraid to leave today. A uh, two-part question. First part is, what is your favorite movie, all of you? Uh, our collective favorite movie? Favorite uh, movie individually. ever? Oh. Individually. Uh, my go-to is usually uh, the celebration, um, or festin, that, uh, that uh, European m movie. I, I, I don't even remember. It's from Scandinavia somewhere, I think. You, That's a good I one. Like, I like a movie called Bedazzled from 1967. Is that really your favorite movie? Because I watched it. It's fine. But really your favorite movie? It affected me when I was uh, like a seventh grader. Have you watched it lately? Yeah, all the time. You love it? I love it. Fine. Britta? Is that right? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have a lot of favorite movies. But one of them is Knights of Kiberia. Oh, yeah. Good Fellini movie. I saw that. It's about the process. I saw it. That's really? That's your favorite? You I them. Really? Or Out of all your all movies? Or what Bedazzled about, and Knights of Caprice? How about uh, Let the Right One In? I like that one too. That, yeah, that's a good one. And the second part. Have you is seen uh, Let the Right One In? Oh, yeah, yeah. That, and that's not your favorite movie? You, you like Bedazzled better than that, really? Look, I don't want to talk about it right now. <laughs> I don't want to be judged by you. <laughs> And the second part is, what is the worst movie you've ever seen? Uh, Bedazzled and Knights of Kiberia. Yeah, it's kind of a, either one, really. No, actually, the, the, the worst movie to date, uh, I think, um, is a film from, like, the 70s with uh, Bob Newhart and Gilda Radner called uh, 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 The First, First Family. Family. That was the first time I ever went to a theater as a kid and was disappointed. I was like, I can't believe how bad this yeah, is. Yeah, the first movie I saw as a kid and thought sucked was, uh, I think it was called Bon Voyage with Fred McMurray or something. Bon Voyage? Yeah. I walked out of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Which one? Not, oh, not yeah. There's Charlie only one. The There's Chocolate only Factory. one. Yeah. Willy Wonka is with Gene Wilder. Yes, Willy Wonka. Yeah. <laughs> Sit down. And who are you supposed to be? A nostalgia critic? Okay. Um, wait, before, I'm sorry, before you say anything. Um, well, a very, very hefe, uh, hefe de bertation tonight. We had a very Daris, Darison? By, let's go ahead, Terra Station, let's go the bit, the heaven pit. <laughs> My favorite part is how you get confident toward the end. Uh, heaven pit. Hi guys! Hi! Hi. You're adorable! My... Thank you! You guys are great. Y'all no. are super talented. Scott, I'm a huge fan of yours from 30 Rock. We'll my... talk later. Oh. <laughs> okay, my favorite episode is Milton Green, We Need a Kidney. I'm sorry, I love that one. Really, thank, thank you. you. No, I watch you all the time. Amazing. I gotta watch that show. You well, should, Dino's never great. seen 30 Rock. Right after I start watching Community. I like Joel McHale. He's cool. Yeah, he's you know, an you asshole. Know, you know, Britta, met Britta him, on that show is named after Britta, who's sitting right here. Oh, it's true. Same height. Should... Same hair. Same, same attitude. style, attitude. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so clearly you all have a talent for voice acting. I want to know how you guys turned it into a career. How did you turn your talent for being able to do all these different voices into something that you could actually do for yourself as an occupation? I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you how. <laughs> I got this show and I hired them. No. That's simple. That's really? not true. Uh, That's essentially Britta, true. Nepotism. No, not really. You guys, you guys have been acting for a long time. You, you, were, you were doing voiceovers uh, and, uh, I was and you act voiceover. with your, your face and your voice. Yeah. yeah. And, and legs face. and legs. Um, I've been in the theater for a long time. And uh, Dino and I went to college together at, at theater school. Yeah, it's not really school. Am I allowed to ask what school? <laughs> Columbia. College. But sp spelled with K's, <laughs> and two of them were backwards. I like it. Uh, and uh, so we we've always known each other, and and he was nice enough when when Adult Swim offered him. I wasn't nice. A show. I was selfish. I, I hoarded him, and Britta. Yeah, he uh, he he hired us. That was our, my first job as a 
like an animation voice, apart from some voiceovers for uh, commercials here and there. But I owe it all to Dino. I owe, I owe it all to you guys. You guys do good voices. Now I know why, like, Jerry Lewis and Sammy kiss each other's asses. Yeah. It's hard not to. I love you guys. Uh, I love it's you. fun to work with people <laughs> that you know. Well, You're dressed as Alice? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and is it a is it a, and it's not it's not like a cyber Alice or a no, steampunk no, no Alice? No, no, special Alice, just the original. But you have gloves, and the seven-year-old Alice didn't have those. I had to evening. You gotta, it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, you got to sex it, it up unique. here. Yeah, yeah, you have to set yourself apart. You yeah. did. Yeah, thank you. Well done. All right. Nice. You're to very you. nice. Thank you. You're very nice. nice. You're very nice. Have her killed. How do we look? Yeah. <laughs> so, do you have any? Self-esteem issues with what you guys created. You you finish making your product and you're like, well, That's we're never awesome. we're never completely satisfied with the end result because there are a lot of corners that have to be cut. But uh, generally, I think we're we're fairly proud of what we've done. I think with Moral Oral, I'm I, I'm generally proud of it. Um, you know, Frankenhole, it was a, a rocky road. Uh, I didn't really know what that show was toward the beginning and felt like I was starting to find it in season two. But there's still, I think, like about four episodes every season of that I'm not that happy with, you know. But there are also stages. There are phases. Like there's a first phase where you might write and not be happy, and then you keep working on it. So maybe your friends are showing you their early phases. It's, they're not finished yet. I mean, you have to keep working on something right. until it's good. Right, and also we get feedback immediately. We put it on television and see what happens, you know. And... Well, that should really depress us, really, because uh, it's never a hit until it gets canceled with me. I know that. I'll agree with that. Um, and I wasn't here for the whole thing. Do you guys personally know Dan Harmon? Yes. 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 We all know Dan Harmon. Um, was he responsible for what happened with? With part? what? Community. I didn't want to say it. With? Uh, Community being canceled. Well, it's not canceled. It, he just got canceled. Uh, <laughs> He uh, uh, and Dino quit out of solidarity. I, I quit. <laughs> I quit too. Uh, well, I quit. He, um, you know, uh, with any show where you're going to be a strong voice, um, and, and if you want it to be what you really want it to be, especially with a network show like that, you've got to go against what your bosses are telling you to do to make it more commercial and worse. And uh, so I guess he was he was kind of I suppose difficult to work with because he wanted the show to be a uh, his vision, you know. So uh, if that's his fault, then it's his fault. Yeah. I wasn't 100 percent. Holy shit! I wasn't 100 percent sure on that, so I was going to tell you to pass along a message. But if it's not his fault, never mind. All right. Well, Thank what you. what would be the message if it was his fault? Fuck you. Okay. I'll still so, tell him. Don't. It's. That's all right. He could take it. I'm going to text him right now. <laughs> Where'd my phone go? Oh, there it is. Hi, guys. Hey. You're all awesome and hilarious people. Uh, now that I'm done ass kissing, I want to ask, can you give us an idea of how tedious it is to do stop motion animation with clay? Is it, like, ridiculously well, boring? Well, first of all, terrible? it's not clay. It's a, it's a wire armature and foam bodies, uh, you know, resin heads. resin heads. Um, but it, we don't do the animating. Right. right. Well, do you guys have any idea of how, like, how shitty it is to, like, move Well, these, these people time? love doing it. They I love assume. it. They, they go into a zone, though. They, they get into a mindset where their mind is moving at a different pace mm. than everything outside their little booth. Um, and so they're moving all the characters they've got. If they've got five characters in a the scene, they've got to have, they're acting five different roles frame by frame. And keeping them all separate and and, uh, and consistent, and they're literally in like little stages that are surrounded by black curtains, and you know there's twelve of them at a time, and and you 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 walk we walk around they're just in their mode, and every now and then toward the beginning we would walk in and just like walk in they'd be like ah! like we caught them in the shower or something you know but it was also, like, it would be like their brain catching up to the rest of the universe's speed. Because they're, they're, they've got their own speed going on in their head. And you, you break that, and they're like, whoa, huh, whoa. And then they can focus as they catch up to us. Right. Also, I fucking love Tim and Eric. What was it like working with them for a little bit? 
Uh, I just hung out a couple days, you know, throwing in my two cents, and when they kept throwing my two cents back, I let them go <laughs> and just let them do what they wanted. I mean, they didn't need any help. Awesome. So, well, Moral yeah. Oral's awesome. 30 Rock's awesome. Mary Frank, Mary uh, Shelley's Frank and Oral's awesome. Love you guys. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Thank you. Hey there. Hello. They just high-fived because of his questions. Yeah! <laughs> uh, I was wondering how you came up with the name for the hardware store owner in Num. Oh, the hardware store, No Hammers Hardware? Yeah. That was actually, uh, uh, insanely enough, I wanted... That is my favorite bit on the show, I think. I wrote a whole scene uh, <laughs> for the Dana Carvey show called No Hammers Hardware, where he just got more and more frustrated. It's uh, a guy named Mr. No Hammers who has a hardware store. And he would have hammers everywhere to overcompensate because people would call up and go, uh, so you don't sell hammers? Yeah, we sell hammers. It's just my name. And, uh, yeah, I wrote a whole scene about it. And, of course, it didn't get on because it's a one-joke thing. Uh, and, uh, interestingly enough, uh, because it's a one-joke thing, when uh, Mike Lasso got the script for Numb, he said, Dino, where's the, there's one joke in this whole script. And it was no hammers. And I, I almost took it out just to, uh, <laughs> I thought he was complaining. Um, also, I, I love where you stopped right there. Cause you, you, you loved what? Like when I stood over there? No, you no, like no. this angle no, of me? No, the moment you stopped the video. Oh, the moment I stopped. You yeah. like looking at Liberta covering up? Yeah, and just the expression on his face. Oral's adorable in this one, isn't he? He's an oral a bull. Come on, I'm Yay. joking about joking. I have a question. Yeah, yes. Because, Who? Uh, you know, who's who's all, talking? All of, oh. the, uh, all of the, these jokes that aren't in, that they're not in the script usually, because I, I don't read them, or maybe I just skip over them. Yeah, you don't read, read anything but your own lines. You're like Chevy Chase. <laughs> <laughs> She's not anything like Chevy Chase. But uh, are they always written in the script? Or, I mean, a lot of the time they you just... Yeah, no hammers was written. I was. Because he has to scream, I have hammers. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but that's okay. You do good work. We make a lot of stuff up in the, in the room when we're recording. We'll do a lot of... Re lot yeah, of, there are a lot of a jokes. Lot of writing in the up. margins on the script. Yeah, there are a lot of jokes that we do. You're right. That just that particular one, because uh, I just told the whole story about how I wrote it three years ago, earlier. So. Hello. Hi. Hi. First of all, most of us who are here, we all agree, like, yeah, you guys are awesome. We love what you do. Thank you. Um, my question is, when it comes to, like, artistic integrity, like, obviously, you know, you had your direction with the show, and that was what got it canceled because he didn't think it was funny enough. Um, like, how many sacrifices were you willing to make before you said, I can't do this anymore, and I, I can't cut anything out before, you know, without... Well, I never paper. really make sacrifices. That's why I get canceled. Um, I, uh, with this, and if we get a series, um, I'm kind of excited about doing a mix of first season with third season. Uh, as you'll see when this airs, you know, it's got the goofiness of an early oral episode, but also we bring in his grandfather and we see the beginnings of, uh, you know, Clay becoming more of an aggressive father and all that. So hopefully we'll find a balance in, I mean, I really should have, we should have taken third season and made it somewhere in between season two and season three. We do, I really jumped a couple seasons there. Um, Cause I'm, you know, I, I, I get bored quickly. So, right. yeah. and, uh, As was said before, it was kind of the same reaction for me when I first saw the show. Like the first couple of episodes, I was like, no, but but as you know, once it got more serious, I, I, I got attached to it. So we feel yeah. the same way. Yeah. I find... Uh, um, Everyone feels that way except for people who are, who are you know... I find shots, show, so. shows when I was a kid took more time to grow on you, and people make uh, more snap judgments now. I think uh, we're, we're living in, you know, uh, a very immediate uh, time where you've got to be instantly gratified. And I, my way of writing is to slowly bring out a character. Um, and it's, it's just what I enjoy. And uh, it's the, the only way I could work. I don't really know the character until I've worked with him more and more and more, you know. And I think I didn't know who these characters were at all, really, until we brought the voiceover actors and then the animators and, you know, and everything kind of came together. And after, like, the first season, 
uh, we all had a clear idea of what the show was, too. Last one, I promise. Why did you bring up Delocated? Uh, my friend created it, and I, li I like it. I very much like it, too. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, it's been about an hour, huh? Out of time. All right, well, thanks, everybody. And uh, I see you doing that. It doesn't. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> we. Uh, just start, try, try and watch the show a little bit more. No, you guys are, are great. Thanks. Thank you.